Greetings. We, are the Guardian. Welcome to Night Vision. I was surfing the World Wide Web of Deception the other day, and came across a biologist from India, trying to explain the difference between the Genesis account of creation, and the so-called scientific account of abiogenesis and evolution. Her information about Genesis was so woefully outdated, I couldn't help but wonder if it was out of ignorance, or deliberate deception. Nevertheless, it prompted me to put together this basic synopsis of the book of Genesis, from a scientific perspective. Some see that as an oxymoron. Science and faith go together like oil and water, right? You cannot genuinely meld the two together, without compromising one or the other, can you? That's the trillion dollar question. It would seem that the topic deserves our undivided attention. The Bible does not claim to be a scientific document, but where it makes a scientific claim, it is scientifically accurate, in the original language. The problem is that the King James Version of the Bible was translated from Hebrew and Greek, into English, over 400 years ago in 1611. We are not saying that the King James Version is not accurate on doctrinal issues, but obviously the scientific perspective of the translators, would not encompass issues like relativity or dark matter. So let's take a closer, more scientific look at Genesis, in its original language. Genesis claims that in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. This basic claim is important, for two reasons. Science used to claim, from Charles Darwin's time period, to Edwin Hubble, that the universe was eternal. We now know that that is incorrect. We now know, that science was wrong, and the Bible was right. That irrefutably proves that scientists, will frequently present their theories as fact, and their so-called facts are often incorrect. Science insisted that the universe had no beginning, and stated that as undeniable fact, whereas the book of Genesis says, that time, matter, and space, did in fact have a beginning. Bible 1, Science 0. But Genesis does not stop there, it actually records the rest of creation. Where the confusion comes in is the translation of the tiny Hebrew word Yom. In most translations of the Bible, that word Yom, is translated into the English word, Day. So in many people's minds, Genesis teaches that God created the universe and all life in six days, when in reality, that word Yom, simply means an epoch or era of time. It means a finite time period of undisclosed length. It's like when we use the phrase, back in the day. Back in the day, I had long hair. That does not mean I had long hair for one day. It means, in the undetermined past, I had long hair for a certain amount of time. So how does that all fit into the Genesis narrative? Genesis could be accurately rendered, at the beginning, God created time, as well as all known matter and scientific laws. He started with the Big Bang. The beginning of the material universe. He started with the electrons, neutrons, and protons, made from quarks, neutrinos, and bosons. He established the laws of gravity and electromagnetism, as well as the strong and weak interaction, of particle physics. Then he set them all into motion, by establishing the constant of the speed of light, when he said, let there be light. E, equals mc squared. God went on to create not only planets, but plants. Not only reptiles, but insects, and mammals. And lastly, his crown jewel, humanity. Mankind was not only the pinnacle of creation, but God actually created man, in his own image. God created man to be body, mind, and spirit, as God was triune in nature too, with the Father being the mind, Jesus being the body, and the Holy Spirit, being the spirit. After God created mankind, he stopped creating. And although we find new existing species every day, Homo sapien is the latest and last species, known to inhabit the earth. So when you take the time to study the obstacles of outdated English translations, and go back to the roots of the original language, you will find not only an accurate scientific presentation of the reality of creation, you will find truth, you will find, 
the creator. Because science is correct about small things like lasers and microwaves, many people assume that they must be correct on the larger issues of the Big Bang and abiogenesis. But lasers and microwaves are true science. They are demonstrable and repeatable. The Big Bang and abiogenesis on the other hand, are just theory. They are neither demonstrable nor repeatable, and therefore not science. They are science fiction. It comes down to your worldview. Scientists tend to revel in their own finite intellect, whereas creationists revel in the infinite intellect and power, of the divine creator. Scientists tend to worship creation, whereas creationists, worship the creator. So rather than blindly accepting outrageous and illogical theories, that claim that the universe and life were created by unknown and unknowable forces of chance, embrace the more logical account of creation, found in Genesis. You don't have to choose between science and faith. Science and faith go hand in hand. So not only did God create time, space, matter, and all the laws of physics, even more importantly, he created you. Peace be unto you and your house. Open your mind to new horizons, open your mind, to your creator.